you have a choice. You take the blue pill, and you stay in ignorant bliss. You take the red pill, and you learn what the truth is. Or whatever the quote is, I, I don't I don't really remember. It's actually been quite a long time since I watched The Matrix. Look, today we're gonna be talking about the Pentax SMC 35 to 70 millimeter lens. It is nothing short of beautiful. The construction on it is exactly what you would expect out of these older style lenses. It's just nice and cold to the touch, but it feels like it's inviting, like you could use it in any situation. People would go, wow, that's a that's a pretty nice lens, you know? Of course, one of the biggest things that I like about it is the uh, aperture control ring, and I've mentioned that in the past, I think. I, you know, I, I just like more granular control over what I shoot, and having that dedicated ring rather than having the stops on my camera, it's just so much nicer. Now, obviously, when you first get the camera, you do have to de-click it, and I made a whole entire video on that. I don't know whether it's released yet, but I'll see. And then uh, just the focusing, it's just, I don't, just listen to this for a second. Wow. Beautiful. Dedicated stops on, on, on a dedicated focus ring is just exactly what I've wanted. All of my current lenses, they all have these infinite focus rings. We can just keep turning them. And I don't know why, maybe I'm just old fashioned, but I really do hate that. Uh, it just doesn't give me the control over the focus that I would want. Now, speaking about the GH4 and, and how I intend to use this lens with it, it's mostly to do with uh, cinematography. So going out and uh, doing shoots. Mainly I just use it to shoot B-roll right now. One thing that I do have a couple of complaints about, actually I, I have a few complaints about it. Um, one of them is the adapter that they use. Uh, it's a KNF concept adapter, but it has this dedicated ring on there that you can actually use to control the aperture as well. It's not as good as the built-in ring, but if you turn it in uh, in the right way, then what ends up happening is, um, well, it kind of overrides the control for the aperture ring on, on the actual body. I, I Why? I don't know. There's probably a way that I can disable it. I just need to take it apart and have a bit of a look. And one of my other gripes is to... Uh, kind of get the zoom function on the lens, you, you have to pull. How am I meant to control that when I'm on a shoot? I don't know, I'll have to like grab on and like extrude it out, I don't know, it, it just seems a little impractical. Which leads me into my final concluding point from this video, should you buy a retro lens? Yeah, I think you should. If you want more control over your camera, then obviously going with these manual type lenses that they used to use in cameras eons ago, I mean this lens is nearly 40 years old, then definitely go out and, and get yourself a nice retro lens set. They're not that expensive anymore. That's more or less all that I have to say about this lens. I haven't actually had a lot of time out in the field due to all this COVID-19 stuff going around. I haven't been able to go out and get any nighttime shots in the city, although I would have loved to include it as B-roll in this video. But nevertheless, I hope you're all doing extremely well during this COVID-19 stuff. Uh, being trapped in my room, I might have a little bit more content coming out. If you enjoyed this video, then please go ahead and uh, give it a like and maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to. I'll see you in the next video about some other lens. I don't know.